What's the word, y'all? If you did not know, there was a basketball game tonight. I, it didn't feel like that, but there was one tonight, and the Boston Celtics got they, they licked back. They were showing the graphic 100 times in this broadcast, or maybe I just saw it 100 times on Twitter. Uh, the Boston Celtics have not lost back-to-back -back games this whole playoff run. Um, once you hit them, they hit you back, and they did that. Who would have thought that having the Defensive Player of the Year back on the court mattered, or having Al Horford, a star in his role, back mattered, and they clobbered the Miami Heat. Um, so shout out to them, man. This was a game that very early on, it felt like uh, the Heat were going to take it. When I say early on, I mean literally very early on, like the first six minutes of the game, because they were doing all the hustle things. They were diving on the floor for loose balls. They were getting the offensive rebounds and putting it back up. And then the Boston Celtics decided never to miss another jump shot. In the first half, they were... 12 for 19, if I'm not mistaken. 12 from 19 from the three point line. And uh, I like your odds if you shoot 40 total threes in the game and you hit half of them. <laughs> I like your odds to win that game. And they they did that. Marcus Smart gave you the best version of him. You know, in, in game number one, they struggled dramatically, basically on both sides of the floor. They didn't have a guy that could bring the ball to the court successfully. That's how you got the six turnover game or six turnover quarter from uh, Jason Tatum in the third quarter of game number one. Well, in this one, it was Marcus Smart. 24 points, uh, 12 assists, one turnover. He had some. He had a couple steals. He had five threes. He was in the game when he probably should have been pulled because they were up by so many points. But hey, it's Marcus Smart. Who gonna tell Marcus Smart not to actually? He may tell Marcus Smart stop playing because it feel like he missing two games every series. He's uh, we're up by 15 to 16 with three minutes to go. Yank him. He had a great game though. Al Horford had a very good game. And just like that, this series is tied and it has officially started because the home team lost a game but even with that said again I mentioned this before I picked the Boston Celtics to win the series I was disappointed in the Miami Heat not being able to punch back after the end of the first quarter or the, the end of the first qu first quarter half of the second quarter uh, they did not fight back Jimmy Butler in game number one gave you a master class 40 points and even in that game you know you had people like Gabe Vincent uh, step up you had Max Struess step up um, and then Bam Adebayo didn't really do anything in the first game offensively but you look past that because you ended up winning who, who cares at the end of the day right or in game number two where you end up losing by 20 plus points and one of the guys that's a max contract player on your team ends up with six points granted good defense you know spam out of buy he's gonna play good defense but six total points basically back-to-back -back games i don't know maybe it was eight points last game nine points last game he was held under 10 points on back-to-back -back games and i understand scoring in the boston celtics in general has been very tough for nba players <laughs> over the past four to five months or so but still bam jimmy gave you 29 he gave you six rebounds. He, he was 61% from the field. He gave you a quality game, and he was just looking around for somebody to help him out, and you didn't get that from Bam Adebayo, who's a, a max player. You didn't give that from Tyler Hero, who was damn near unanimous six men of the year and a guy that's looking for a big-ass bag this offseason. You didn't get that from pretty much anybody. If Gabe Vincent is your second-best player, I don't like your odds to win that game, especially if you're giving up 127 points. But in their defense, they haven't played this bad defensively pretty much all season. I saw the stat that the the points per possession that they gave up was the highest all year round. So I don't think that they're giving up 127 points next game. But still, the offense has to come too. And, and one thing I have noticed from watching them with Cal Lowry and watching them without Cal Lowry, first of all, that streak of seven straight games without Cal Lowry is dead. Now they're 71, which is still a pretty good record. Um, Bam Adebayo relies so much on Cal Lowry's shot creation. And I guess you could say the, the same thing for a lot of the people on the team. But Cal Lowry, or at least a good version of Cal Lowry, is essential for this Miami Heat team for them to, to win this series, in my personal opinion. But it's felt like everything with the Boston Celtics way. Even the chase down block from Tyler Hero was called a foul. That's going in the Boston Celtics' favor. But Grant Williams was mic'd up at game number one. He gave them pretty much a stinker. In this game, he came back out with a 19-piece. And uh, he, he, was taking, he took a mid-range jump shot that was so far away from the rim I was like bro only practices his three pointers <laughs> in the postseason I mean uh, in the offseason which I'm cool I mean it, it's about to get him paid you shoot 40% from three and also give elite level defense you're gonna get paid uh, but yeah, he he missed those. Jason Tatum had a great game. He's talking about Deuce going swimming in Miami. That's the number one thing on his priority list. I don't really have anything to say about this game because halfway through it, it was 25 points at halftime, and I was disengaged. You know, I still you know I do my job right. I still watch these games just in case there is a run. But I got I got the game on the big screen, and you can't see my setup. But I got another monitor underneath it, and I was watching Cubs versus Diamondbacks. I was watching Trevor Story put together the three home run game. Like, I was focused on that while that, there was not a lot to say 
about these things. The Heat need Bam to play better offensively. They need somebody else outside of Bam and Jimmy Butler to step up, and they need not to allow the Boston Celtics to hit 23s in a game if they want to, you know, take another game from Boston in the TD Garden. But it's deeper than that. The NBA has a problem at the moment, and... I, I was I was racking my brain trying to figure out is this a new problem or is this something that's been happening in the past couple playoffs and I just don't remember it because ev everything is sunshine and roses once it's over with you know what I'm saying like I'd be thinking like man that playoffs was fire and then I'm going back and be like was it really or did we have three games all of that playoffs that were elite and that carried the entire thing um in the last 13 games that we've watched as fans of the playoffs as enjoyers of basketball, um, and this is from overtime, out of the last 13 games, the average margin of victory is 22.4 points. We have not had a si oh, we had one single digit win from the Miami Heat against the against the 76ers at the end of that series. But even that, it was like it wasn't really that close. Average margin of victory is 22.4. Now, granted, some of that is because um, the Suns lost by a gazillion points to the Mavericks. And then the Heat won a game by a gazillion points against... Who the hell was that against? So they won by a gazillion points in game five versus the 76ers. And, and again, I'm trying to figure out, is that... Is, obviously, that's not normal. 22.4 is insane. But do we always get ye these years where the games are mostly blowouts? You know, like again, I'm, I'm going to keep referencing this because it's fresh in my mind. The Suns versus Dallas Mavericks series was a seven, but every single one of them games was a blowout. And I and you're like, Kenny, why is that the case? I, it's because the lack of variation when it comes to to basketball nowadays. And this is again, I'm an enjoyer of basketball. I enjoy watching the game of basketball. But I'm just keeping it a buck with you. Teams have off all nights and off nights. And we're talking about from the three point line. The Boston Celtics just hit 23 pointers in a game the opposing team didn't match that nearly at 50 percent uh at the 50 percentile so it was a blowout i mean that's really what it is um the other night the boston celtics shot 22 percent from the three-point line on about 50 attempts if you're losing that many possessions and then the opposing team well actually the warriors actually didn't shoot that great either um but still that that's one of the cases the bucks in game seven shot four for 33 from three while the Celtics shot 22 from 55. Blowout game right there. You could just look at four made threes versus 22. There's no way you're keeping that game close. And obviously, there's nothing you can really do about it, right? There's nothing that Adam Silver can put into the rule book to prevent blowouts. Or I even made a tweet uh, at the referees that people took way too seriously. Come on now. Y'all got under... Why the hell would I be? Anyway, uh, people took that way too seriously. But we do have a blowout problem currently right now. And again, as a basketball enjoyer who talks about basketball for a living, I'm, I'm okay with dedicating that time to even if it is just a five minute recap of what I saw in the game, I'm okay with dedicating that time. But if I'm thinking about like my dad, who's not a super, super diehard NBA fan, why the hell would he continue to watch tonight's game after the first quarter or after halftime? You know what I'm saying? That is the problem there. Like, and, and overall, the products is kind of mid, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? We're down to our final four teams. And all three of the games that we've seen so far have been a blowout. Not so not so fun. Not so fun. These are supposed to be the most elite of the elite. And I think that they are. But even the elite of the elite, we having those off nights while the other team is elite of the elite. So I don't know, man. It's just, it's just something that's going on within the NBA. I don't have anything else to say about it, really. God, this is probably the shortest recap of all time. Um... But what the, what do you say? What do what am I supposed to talk about? So I'll just see you tomorrow.